Today we're at the 54th Annual Council of Science Editors meeting in Baltimore, Maryland, and I have the great pleasure of being with uh, Bruce Danzig, Editor-in-Chief of NRC Research Press in Canada, uh, who I've known for a little while, and um, we just thought we'd sit down and have uh, some discussions around choosing a journal, uh, and other sessions will be about uh, what, to, what editors expect of authors, what authors should look at when submitting papers to journals, what they should be thinking about. And so welcome, Bruce, and uh, um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit first about what you do and the journals that are in the umbrella of NRC Research Press sure. and uh, some top view things. Okay. Thanks, Don. I'm, I'm pleased to be uh, talking with you. Uh, as you said, I'm editor-in-chief of the NRC Research Press in Canada. We are the largest scientific publisher in, uh, in Canada. We publish 15 journals, uh, ranging from Botany, Canadian Journal of Chemistry, Canadian Journal of Zoology, Environmental Reviews, Genome, Canadian Journal of Civil Engineering, quite a range of, of, uh, of journals in the science and engineering areas. So a little bit of background, and I understand uh, that these were really initially part of the Canadian government as a, a, a publishing initiative, but then they have gone, there has been a transition recently, maybe you can just give an indication of uh, what the status of these journals are in the Canadian landscape. Sure. That they, uh, the journals, as you said, were published uh, by the federal government uh, through NRC, the National Research Council. So the NRC Research Press doesn't really have any tie-in with them anymore. Uh, that, that's been privatized. The, uh, some of the journals were started by the council. Some of them were started by uh, societies or others and taken over by the, uh, by the NRC later on. For example, the, one of our top journals, Canadian Journal of Fisheries and Aquatic Sciences, uh, was published by a different government agency. First, way back, the Fisheries and Fisheries Research Board of Canada mm -hmm. journal from uh, at the turn of the last century, and uh, uh, they asked us to take it over some years ago. So it's a mix of society journals as well as. Uh the journals without societies associated with them, or all the journals associated with some form of the, Canadian society? Uh, they're all uh, uh, published by us. We have relationships with societies in most cases, not in all of them, but usually we have some relationships with them. So as editor-in-chief, I select uh, the editors for those journals, and often I go to those societies for suggestions. Uh, if we have a time with the society, it helps keep that relationship uh, going with the society. Some have named us an official um, uh, depository of, of material in their area and they encourage their members to publish with us. Others just uh, have, a, have a, a, a very informal relationship with okay. us. So as we're talking about your journal specifically, granted every author around the world and within Canada or the U.S. or Asia or anywhere, South America, they clearly have a, a lot of selection of journals to potentially submit to. So why would, um, what is the advantages or what is the, uh, what is the audience of the NRC press journals? Uh, scientists around the world, and, and just maybe to pursue that a, a little further, why would one pick us or anybody else? I think a, an author should look around and find journals where their sorts of uh, disciplines are well represented. What kinds of papers does a, does a journal publish? I think one should really read papers in the journal and say, yes, oh, this is similar to, to my kind of work, or it would be of interest. If, if readers are interested in this paper, they would be interested in my work. Uh, and, and, and start from there when they're submitting something, because mm -hmm. I think it's a very important uh, uh, criterion for, for selecting a journal. Okay. Um, as we move on into other areas of discussion, um, is there something that you would like to say further about uh, the journals that you represent and, and the, uh, the types of um, uh, you know, quality readership aspects of things of, of why these journals have been so successful? Yeah, they're, uh, they're recognized around the world, particularly some of them, of course. Some are, some are of uh, more international repute than others, but some have been around for a long time and have always been in the top few journals that a person in those disciplines thinks about when they publish. For example, the Canadian Journal of Fisheries and Aquatic Sciences or the Canadian Journal of Forest Research, my old journal. Um, these have traditionally been in the top 10%, 15% of their, in, by whatever measure one uses and by reputation mm -hmm. uh, for those fields. 
Um, others are, most of our journals are fairly general journals. So they're not like um, journals like Cell or very specific subdiscipline journals. They tend to be broader. Uh, and therefore, the readership tends to be broader. Um, uh, so in, in closure to this section, what uh, we'll be talking a little bit about today, uh, given the wealth of background that you have in the publishing and journal and editorial and editing uh, arena, is how authors should really choose a journal, um, what role impact factor has in that, among other types of metrics in the choice. Uh, we'll also be getting into... Uh, how editors, journal editors, uh, seek papers, what they look for in a submission, and, uh, and, and, and then by deduction, what, quite honestly, authors should be doing to, have, to maximize their opportunity to be uh, received by the journal and, and uh, be queued into the peer review system and potentially, hopefully, have the success in publication in that journal.